Got one. Mystic Ways. Yep. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Nothing the Skills, and today I'm gonna be talking about the classified Deadeye that I've been working on and I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I do. Deadeye used to be my favorite build to run in 1.6 when they nerfed it. I don't use it as much, but recently I've been using it a lot and I'm having fun killing rogues with it. And I hope you guys enjoyed that video right before this build. So let's get right into the build guys. So the first thing you're gonna notice is I'm running a four piece classified Deadeye with a reckless chest piece and a specialized backpack. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm running this, it, the build this way, and then a different way you can actually run this build. So for the chest piece, I'm running a reckless chest piece with increased damage of 8% and an increased incoming damage of 10%. And I'm not really worried about the incoming damage of 10% because most of the time I'm fighting people from range and I drop them before they have a chance of dropping me. And if they get within that, 10 meter range I'm pretty much gonna die because I'm squishy but I should be hitting them before they come towards me my major attributes are health enemy armor damage and ammo capacity and the reason why I chose going with enemy armor damage is even though it affects NPCs a little bit more it still will help you increase a little bit damage tor towards other players and then I'm running a firearm mods with skill haste and firearm mods with skill haste just to increase how fast I'm getting my pulse and how fast I'm getting my heals since I am so squishy. For the mask, I'm running skill power, damage to elites, and the reason I chose skill power over health is because I want my pulse to be a little bit stronger and I want my health to heal me a little bit more. For the knee pads, I'm running critical hit damage to increase max damage output, bleed, blind, and shock, and then of course firearms. If you notice, all my pieces are gonna be rolled firearms because the point of this build is to push out as much damage as possible in a short amount of time. So one to two shots to drop somebody should be what you should be going for. So for the backpack, I'm running a specialized backpack with critical hit damage and burn resistance. The mods are firearm mods with health and then post crit hit damage for the performance mods. On all my performance mods on this build, I have the 2% post crit hit damage to give me most damage output when I hit my pulse. For the gloves, I'm running critical hit damage, marksman rifle damage, and critical hit chance. You don't need critical hit chance for this build because as you know, is when you're in cover, you hit 100% with the four piece and when you're out of cover, it's 50%. So you really don't need the critical hit chance, but it's on here and I can't roll it because I rerolled my firearms and I rerolled my marksman rifle damage already. So until I can reroll everything in 1.8, this is what I'm running with. And then for the holster, I'm running skill haste. Some people choose to run health. I choose to run skill haste just because having that little bit more skill haste is gonna help me get my pulse a little bit faster and my health a little bit faster. So as you see, my skill haste is gonna be 15%, which isn't a lot, but it's better than not having anything. My critical hit chance is 6% just because the gloves, it should be zero if you wanna maximize your potential of your builds. And then if you notice critical hit damage is at 152, headshot damage is at 151, which doesn't matter because that is taking out 
because of the way the build is set up. So let's get into what the build does, in case some of you don't know. The set two bonus is 40% initial bullet stability. Bonus three is 20% marksman rifle critical hit damage. And bonus four is where it's all at. While in cover, you hit 100% critical hit chance. What that means is my 152 critical hit damage is always going to hit when I'm in cover. Now, when I'm out of cover, I have a 50% chance of hitting that 152 critical hit damage. Also, the fifth talent, which you could run on the backpack if you didn't want to run a specialized, and I'll tell you why I run the specialized, is that your initial bullet stability is an extra 40%. So that's 80% initial bullet stability. So that means your rifle is not going to move on the first bullet shot. And then you're going to hit an extra 20% marksman rifle critical hit damage. So let's get into why I'm using a specialized backpack. So as you see, I'm running a specialized backpack. And my pulse that I use is a tactical scanner and this is going to give me 20 is 11% critical hit chance which I don't need but it's going to give me 22% extra critical hit damage now if I wasn't running that backpack and I was running say just a dead eye backpack but that's not a dead eye but if I was it's going to be 15%. So I'm going to lose 7% critical hit damage. Now, you're like, well, you get you get 20%. So it's really 13% more when you're running the dead eye. But the problem is, yes, that's true. But if you go to the heel, your heel's only going to be 74K. But if you're running the booster shot, it's only 44K. So now if we look at when I have the specialized backpack, it's 98K, so it's almost 50K more. And if you're running the booster shot, it's 59K. So you can see the big difference that you can get out of running the specialized backpack if you want to have some kind of survivability. And you'll notice in my video, a couple times guys are shooting me i'm able to hit my overdose jump on the wall get in some cover and then pop them and drop them so that's just the difference between survivability and always being straight squishy now sometimes when i'm fighting a multiple group and i know they're running a pulse or a scrambler i'll use a scrambler to counter them and that still gave me 19 percent critical hit damage versus just the 22 percent critical hit damage so for my talents, if I'm running solo, I'm going to run strike back, reach low health to reduce active skill cooldowns by 20%. Tactical advance, completed cover to cover move to increase weapon damage by 2% per meter, covered for 5 seconds up to a maximum of 30%. Kill a hostile while moving to reduce incoming damage by 15%. And then headshot a hostile to pulse them for 10 seconds. Now, if I was with a group, I'd probably take off the precision, put on triage, and I could even take on on the move since I probably won't be on the move when I'm killing anybody, and put on critical safe. So that's just how I'm running that build since I am running solo. Now let's get to the nice juicy part of the build, the weapons. So for my primary, I'm running an M700 carbine. This has base damage of 166 with my firearms, of course. I'm running prepared, deadly, and elevated. If I could get any M700, I would recommend trying to get one that has prepared and deadly already rolled there. And then you can reroll elevated to competent. What you guys know is when you're using a skill, it gives you 10% damage. And then elevated, it's increase your damage by 10% when you're elevated more than 1.2 meters above your target, which is cool. But... It sucks having to try to find an elevated position that has cover too. So that's where this doesn't really work all the time. So let's get to the mods, which is the juicy part and which makes the build and helps you get higher critical hit damage. So for the scope, you should try to look for a C79 scope that has 18% critical hit damage. And then the other two talents you really don't have to worry about. I have accuracy and optimal range. 
for the suppressor, I'm running critical hit damage of 19% with stability and accuracy. For the undergrip, I'm running a critical hit damage with stability and accuracy. And then for the extended magazine, I'm running magazine size, critical hit damage, and rate of fire. So those are the ones you're, you should be trying to stack as much critical hit damage, no critical hit chance on your weapon to give you max critical hit damage on your weapon and on this build. And then for your secondary, it's really what you prefer, but I'm running competent, deadly, and responsive on my lightweight M4. It has 25.1K base damage. And this, I just run whatever I run. I think I'm stacked on critical hit chance on this. So it pretty much has everything that I would normally run on my other builds with my lightweight M4. But it's my backup in case somebody comes upon me. Maybe I can get a shot on them, melt them before they actually melt me. But as you can see, I'm really squishy with this build. So the real build is the M700 and dropping them before they drop me. So I hope you guys enjoy this build, guys. If you guys have any questions on it, wondering why it runs things a certain way, what am I running as a backup? Do I switch out my sniper rifles? Do I switch out my backpacks? Right now, I only have a four-piece classified set. When I do get the backpack, I will test it out. I just think having a little bit stronger heal, having a little bit stronger pulse, and the 13% critical hit damage you would get extra compared to what I'm getting off my specialized backpack and my pulse really isn't worth it. So for me, this is the best build you can run with four piece, specialized backpack, reckless chest piece, an M700 or the M44 if you get a good one and then have a good secondary. So either SMG or assault rifles that you think you can do some kind of damage to drop somebody. And if you get your shot off on them first, you may get lucky. So I hope you guys enjoyed this build video. Remember okay. guys, hit the subscribe button, hit the like oh, button, drop you, a comment down below. <laughs> and thank nice. you for supporting my channel. We keep growing every day. And without you guys, my channel wouldn't be as successful as it is. Nothing but skills. Thanks you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next build video.